Wow, this new James Webb data has thrown cosmology into crisis. Something is wrong with the universe or with our theories. We take a close look at the new groundbreaking findings about the expansion of the cosmos in this video, so be sure to stay tuned until the end and if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up comment, because that's how we get the algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thank you guys and welcome. The world of cosmology was turned upside down more than a year ago, because since then the James Webb Telescope has been observing the cosmos. It allows us to look even deeper and in even greater detail into the early days of the universe than the Hubble Telescope. To illustrate the differences between Hubble's optical observation and James Webb's infrared observation, I have selected a comparative image of the so-called cosmic cliffs. Hubble on the left, James Webb on the right. Clear difference, isn't it? Please let me know in the comments which image you find more aesthetically pleasing and why Hubble or James Webb. I'm curious to know what the majority of you think. The latest data from James Webb has now magnified the cosmological crisis. To understand why, we first need to clarify a concept, the Hubble constant. Imagine your lifelong dream was to become a physicist. But unfortunately you always skipped lectures and dropped out of university. Now you've become a baker instead. Also a great job, but you can't quite shake off your passion for physics, and that's why you want to calculate the exact speed at which your raisin cake bakes in the oven. By calculating this pasta expansion constant, you hope to be readmitted to university. This is roughly how we can imagine the Hubble constant. So without baked goods, and without the whole background story, but otherwise the same because the Hubble constant describes the speed at which the universe expands and is therefore of fundamental importance for our concept of space and time. Edwin Hubble, the famous American astronomer after whom the Hubble telescope is named, made a decisive contribution to developing the idea of the expanding cosmos in the first place. In the 1920s, he observed that most galaxies were moving away from us. This observation led to the formulation of Hubble's law. This states that the speed at which a galaxy is moving away from us is proportional to its distance. Or as they say in the bakery scene, the speed at which a raisin moves away from the center of the cake is proportional to the distance to the center of the cake. Okay, I'm really starting to get hungry for cake. Yum! So astronomers use the Hubble constant to calculate how fast the universe is expanding by measuring the distance to distant raisins, or objects in space. And incredibly, this also allows us to estimate the age of the universe if we know the rate at which the universe is expanding and, conversely, trace back the time until everything in the universe was concentrated at one point. Then we get an estimate for the age of the universe. And the calculation showed that the universe is about 13.8 billion years old, so it only has to last a few billion years before it would receive a significant pension payment in Germany. All sounds relatively unproblematic now, but far from it. A dark shadow hangs over cosmology, the Hubble tension. Different techniques for calculating the constant deliver different results and this discrepancy has been a great mystery for years. It is as if different tape measures gave different results for the size of the universe. Or as if three different scales would indicate that I weigh over 100 kilograms. Which absolutely cannot be, so it must be a crisis of physics. The measurement of the Hubble constant does not lead to an unambiguous value. Up to now, it has been relatively easy to talk our way out of this and put it down to the fact that our telescopes are simply not good enough. Astrophysicist and Nobel Prize winner Adam Rees from John Hopkins University puts it this way. Have you ever had trouble recognizing a sign that was at the edge of your vision? What does it say? What does it mean? He's saying that the glasses we used to look into the cosmos just weren't good enough to clearly resolve the Hubble constant. It's like when you accidentally buy the really cheap contact lenses with two diopters too few and then wander through the city half blind. But now we updated our cosmic glasses last year and no longer only look into space with Hubble, but above all with James Webb. So the Hubble tension should have dissipated by now, right? The answer is... No, it has gotten even worse. A team of researchers, led by the aforementioned Adam Rees, used the James Webb Telescope to really get to grips with the cosmos by observing sea feeds in distant galaxies. This raises the not insignificant question. What are sea feeds? Sea feeds are a kind of distance measuring station in space. They are variable stars, which means that they go through regular periods of changing brightness. And here's the thing, 
The brighter a Cepheid star is in its brightest phase, the longer the duration of its brightness period. This is an iron law that always applies to everyone. It's like saying, the brighter a cell phone shines, the longer its battery lasts, or something like that. And this truly remarkable relationship between the brightness and the period of Cepheids enables astronomers to calculate the distance to these stars very precisely. That's why they are reliable beacons in the universe for astronomers to measure the distance to distant galaxies. The hope now is that if James Webb looked at these lighthouses, the uncertainties about the Hubble constant could be resolved. Because James Webb may be able to see more clearly through galactic dust clouds and nebulae in the infrared range than Hubble can in the optical range, and so the Cepheid measurement could be more accurate than ever before. Adam Rees comments, Because the Cepheids are so far away, they appear crowded into a very small space from our distant vantage point, so we lack the resolution to distinguish them from their line-of-sight neighbors. And the result that James Webb has now delivered is quite something. It says, Hubble's previous measurements were correct. Our understanding of the Hubble constant is basically going in the right direction, i.e. the cosmos is expanding. And faster and faster. But the Hubble tension, the contradictions in the measurement, remain. I can already hear some of you shouting indignantly. So nothing new was measured? Then why are you even making a video, dude? Because these findings are quite something at second glance, because they show that the Hubble voltage could by no means be explained by the fact that our cosmic glasses were too bad. In other words, that we couldn't see well enough. It shows that the Hubble field is real and that there's definitely something wrong with our understanding of cosmic expansion. Adam Rees said, this leaves the more interesting possibilities on the table and the mystery of the tension deepens. The most exciting possibility is that the tension is a clue to something we are missing in our understanding of the cosmos. But what? What are we missing? What is the piece of the puzzle we need to find a consistent value for the expansion of the cosmos? After Hubble and James Webb came to the same conclusions, we can probably rule out measurement errors. That leaves, as Adam Rees said, the really interesting possibilities. There are two in particular. Firstly, dark energy. Dark energy is a mysterious, as yet unidentified form of energy that could exert a kind of negative pressure in space and cause the universe to expand at an accelerated rate. Some scientists believe that there may be a change in dark energy over time that affects the rate of expansion of the universe. And that could explain the discrepancy between the measurements. Second, our idea of gravity is wrong. More and more astrophysicists think that our current idea of gravity may not be sufficient to describe the motions of galaxies on large scales. A modification of general relativity or the existence of previously unknown gravitational interactions could explain these different measurements of the Hubble constant. But that would of course be a massive scientific revolution. So the crisis in cosmology is deepening and it remains exciting. I'll keep you up to date with all the new developments, but of course you can only do that if you follow my channel. I'm very close to 20,000 subscribers, and as I know from the YouTube statistics, more than half of the viewers haven't even subscribed to the channel. It's completely free, helps me immensely, and you won't miss any more galactic videos. So everyone, press the subscribe button. Let's move on to another big question of the cosmos. Was the Big Bang really the beginning? Here, too, more and more doubts are arising, because through observations by James Webb we have found galaxies that were already so far developed so early that it seems somehow implausible that the Big Bang should have taken place shortly before. So is the Big Bang theory wrong? If you want more Cosmic Mind Blow, click on the video below and travel with me to the dawn of space and time. And if you want to support the channel and store for Christmas presents, visit my Astro Store. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.